Hi, my name is Gabby and welcome to my channel, Gabby on Paper. Today's video is going to be a two-parter. First, we're going to close out December and cover some overspending and reassign some money. Then we will budget out my first paycheck of January. I'm actually filming this portion on Monday, January 2nd because I have the day off and honestly, I can't deal <laughs> with seeing my budget like this and I have to that I'm overspent. It's really bothering me, so I figured I'd get on here a few days early and take care of this. We'll leave the paycheck budget with me portion for when I actually get my paycheck later in the week, and then I'll just combine the two. All right, if we go to this, you can see here that I have one overspent category, and that is for the coat that I purchased at REI, I went over this in my reset video, um, something that I wanted and I knew that I didn't have the money in this category, but I did have money to pull from in other categories to cover this. So I decided to go ahead and do it. So that's what we'll do today. I'm going to gather up all the little bits of money that I have left over and then get that taken care of. And then I decided to cancel Pip Sticks before I was charged for this. So that's awesome. And now I'll go ahead and hide the category. So I did well this month in my variable expenses. I didn't go over in any of those categories, which is awesome. I had budgeted, I think, an extra $50 towards dining out because my sister was in town. But even if I hadn't done that, I would still have extra money to send up to ready to assign. Obviously, you can see here that we do not have enough money in ready to assign to cover all of the overspending in my shopping category. But that's because I am taking the remaining of that from my Christmas budget. I had budgeted $1,400 to spend on Christmas and things got a little crazy. I ultimately ended up not spending that much and I had $599.33 left over. I did consider keeping this in there and just letting it roll over into the new year. But then I decided to buy my coat, so the majority of that is going to fund that coat, and then the rest I'll assign in different areas. So I've gathered up all the extras that I want to assign to new categories. The money that's left in these other categories are sinking funds or things that I want to build up, so they're going to roll over month after month. The, typically, I would only pull money from variable expenses and if I have any extra from like my subscriptions or bills. So we have $895.67 to work with right now. And I'll go ahead and cover this overspending. So that's down to zero. Now we have $455.52. We're going to go into January. So I'm trying to get a full month ahead on all my bills. The only thing that I'm behind on is rent. So I'm only one paycheck ahead. So every paycheck I get, I cover half of my rent and utilities with that paycheck. So I'm just a little behind on the rent portion of it. The rent that I'm gathering now in January is not due until February 1st. So I'll have the money by then. The point is, I think I'm gonna send $200. Maybe I'll come back and change that and do a little less depending on what else I have going on. But for now, I'll do 200. I'm also gonna send 52 cents just to the holding category to keep this a nice even number. 
This is when the focus on now category group comes in handy. I know exactly what categories I should be sending this extra money to. So for my boyfriend's birthday, we'll send 75 and get him up to 200. For live events, let's go ahead and get that up to 100. For my birthday, we're at 130 right now. So we'll at 20. And for dates and stuff, which includes Valentine's Day, let's add 40. Okay. That still leaves us with $95. I'm actually going to send a little extra towards my wish farm. And we have a couple items here, so let's send $5 to the moon face pendant. I have some news on this, this second item right here. Um, I'm not going to share this until everything is finalized, but I'm sure you can guess what it is. And maybe, actually, maybe by the time that this video goes up, I'll have more details to share. All right, so we have $90. So one of my goals for January was to send an extra $100 towards rent, which we just took care of, and that's awesome. Another goal that I have for the first quarter is to send an extra $100 besides the $542 that I'm sending each month to my Roth IRA. But I don't think I want to take care of that now. I think it's more important that I get a full month ahead on my rent so let's send 68.25 to rent to get this down to needing three hundred dollars oops all right all right do 10 here in here and then the 175 will send to holding and this holding category is once I have more money I'm gonna send that somewhere else it's just a few dollars that I'm gathering from here and there all the extra money I had in December that I needed to reassign to different categories has been taken care of as you can see here I do have one overspent category but that's just money that my sister has to send me for our subscriptions that we split um, so once everything goes through i think the last charge will be on the 7th i'll ask her to send me the money and she'll do it all right so that's it for now i'll see you in a few days to budget out the first paycheck of january Hi guys, it's now Thursday, January 5th, and I'm back to film my budget with me for my first paycheck of January. So let's go ahead and get started. The very first thing I do when I get my paycheck is send $609.75 towards my rent and utility fee, so I'll go ahead and do that. I am working on getting a full month ahead on my rent rather than just one paycheck ahead, so I've already contributed $300 in hopes of of getting ahead so part of the 609.75 will go towards january the rest will go towards uh, february so we need 300 dollars in january which should fully fund the month yep it looks like we're only underfunded by 1835 and that's just um money that my sister owes me which I will get from her once our final subscription goes through. Um, she'll just send me the full amount. And that should be in, in a day or two. So now we'll go into February and put the remaining 309.75 towards rent. Um, I'm hoping that by the end of the first quarter, I can get that full month ahead on my rent. All right, now that that's done, let's also send $271 towards my Roth IRA, which is half of what I want to contribute monthly. We'll go ahead and fund the emergency fund for 75. We'll do AT&T 
and that's it. We'll do com ed uh, with the second paycheck. All right, so these two are done. Now going down to subscriptions, we'll go ahead and fund everything, which is Netflix, Apple One, and Hulu. Those three things I split with my boyfriend and my sister, so this is my third. And then the Peloton subscription I split with my boyfriend. We'll fund that for $47.40. Let's see, we have seven fifteen eighteen and six hundred and thirty-five dollars for variable expenses. I'm gonna go ahead and skip that for now. I think I'll do that with my next paycheck. Let's see here. We'll send sixty towards my personal shopping category, twenty-five towards hobbies, and then twenty-five to self-care. Let's see. To take care of all of my yearly subscriptions minus YNAB that is still kind of pending, um, we'll do thirty two seventy five and go ahead and fund all of that. So we'll send. I had a goal of two hundred and forty dollars by January of twenty twenty four. Or, or maybe the end of December. Oh well, yeah, this, by December 20th, 2023. Um, and because I had money left over for my anniversary this time around, it's kind of carried over and made this amount smaller. But I'm actually going to go ahead and send the full amount that I originally had in mind, which was $20 a month. I think I'll continue to do that until I'm fully funded. We'll skip travel and Christmas for now because those are bigger ones. I kind of want to see how much we can cover first before going back to some of the bigger ones. So 24 right share, 45 for gifts, 35 for home goods, 25 for electronics, and 25 for miscellaneous. Okay. Down here, it's just credit card payments, so we won't send anything to that. Reimbursement and hidden categories. We also won't send anything to the wish list. Let's go ahead and make this an even $400 by sending $2.43 to holding. And what else can we cover? All right, so let's just do, let's start by doing the full amount that we need for each of these. Now this leaves us $250. We'll go ahead and fund travel, I think. Send $100 to travel. don't know what to do right now. Typically I leave my variable expenses for my second paycheck of the month and I think that's a pretty good idea to continue doing. Let's do some quick math. <laughs> Get that out of the way so that we have $100 to send to the focus on now categories. I'll take care of rent with my next paycheck, the rest of the Roth IRA with the next paycheck since I'm doing like half from each check. Um, I'll do the rest of the variable expenses next time around as well as um, Christmas. I forgot to mention this. I used $20, $20 in 2023 for a secret Santa gift for my team. We did it in January and I forgot to buy the gift in December before I moved the money over. So I was going to cover this from some of the focus on now money that I had sent from my Christmas budget. So I will actually move $10. We'll move that to Christmas from the dates and stuff and then we'll also move ten dollars from um my birthday fund to christmas that way january gets a full hundred dollars for christmas 2023 
because this is this was supposed to come out of Christmas 2022. I just made a mistake. All right, so we still have $100 to work with. So what I've decided to do is once I fund all the categories that I want with, and hit the targets that I'm looking to hit in the month that I'm funding, <laughs> so in this case, one month ahead, I will then go back to the month that we're at and fund any extra. So these $100 that I have here, I'm gonna send all to focus on now and I'm gonna do that in January. So we have $100 for dates. Let's go ahead and send an extra. Let's do 15 for now and see what else we can do here. We'll send 15 here as well to my birthday live events we'll get 20 and then my boyfriend's birthday is really the one that i need to to fund a little more because even though it's further away not till april i need more money than i do for any of the other categories so i'm sending more money to it so that brings us down to zero um yeah that's all I have for today. It looks like February, we're still underfunded by 1923, almost 1924. Um, and then we'll be able to start funding March, which is exciting. This age of money number was above 30, but after paying my rent and paying off my credit card, um, it really dropped down. It took a pretty big nosedive, so I'm going to be building it back up, and I'm hoping that by the time I get um, my rent a full month ahead, that that age of money will get to 30 and stay there, you know. Um, just a couple of other things I kind of wanted to mention while I have you is... I was riding the train home from work the other day and I was standing in front of a girl who was sitting down and it was really, really crowded. So there, like, there was nowhere for me to be except for right in front of her. And I looked down <laughs> and she was using YNAB, which I thought was fun. I got a quick look at her phone. I wasn't like looking because I'm always like careful on my phone. Like I don't want people looking over my shoulder and seeing what I'm looking at, even though usually it's just like Instagram or something. Um, but yeah, it was just funny to see that out in the wild. I really liked it. <laughs> Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that we got details on our rent renewal. I was really worried that it was going to go up a lot because I've heard horror stories, but I think it's calmed down a bit. Right now, our base rent is $2,236, and what they offered was $2,280 for base rent, so a difference of about $40. $44 is that right? I think that's right. And then for the utility fee, it went from $120 to $123. And honestly, that amount is so small. I think in total, I would pay about less than $30 more than what I'm paying now for for rent and utilities and all that um which is a lot lot less than i was thinking i literally was thinking like i was hoping that we would be paying um no more than 200 dollars each for our rent increase because of the horror stories i've heard um thankfully that's not the case but we're not sure if we want to stay here we really like our apartment. We like our location and the proximity to the lake and to the river. And we like the area, like some of the neighborhoods in our area that you can walk in, you know, walk to, walk around. Um, they're really fun and like they're cute. Uh, so I don't know if we want to move. I really don't know. It would be great to pay less money in rent. I was talking to some of my coworkers. One of them said that, so she lives with her boyfriend in a one bedroom apartment. She literally pays half of what we pay. Like her portion of the rent is $625, where mine's gonna be $1,250. <laughs> and then um, 
another co-worker lives in a bigger apartment it is an older it's like a house converted into apartments um and so it is a little bit older but she has a three-bedroom apartment so she her and her boyfriend share a room and then they each have an office which i think is awesome um and i think she pays I think she said she pays like between 18 and 1900 dollars so i know our rent is expensive but it's really not for the area that we live in and because our apartment is brand new i don't know i don't know because right now i work about a mile and a half from work so the commute is so quick and easy we live so close to the train and again close to the river and the lake and that's something i do value because i want to spend my summer days at the lake and walking to the river for, to read and we have like a rooftop area in our building so it's nice to like hang out, hang out up there in the summer when it's a little warmer but I don't know. I don't know what we want to do. <laughs> I just thought I would share. We have until the end of February to figure it out. I think we're going to be taking the next couple of weekends and exploring some of the neighborhoods in Chicago that we would consider living in um, and seeing, seeing what's out there because we don't know really. It'd have to be a pretty good apartment and a pretty good area for us to leave the convenience of where we're at now and again we're so close to like some really cute streets full of like beautiful homes and i don't know it's gonna be a tough one because i do want to save money i would love to get my rent bill down but oh, i like it here i don't know Anyways, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> if you haven't done so already, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe. Bye!